And if you have any questions as we go through everything, um, Ali uh, right next to me has her computer up um, and she will be going over questions and being able to answer things uh, as we kind of go through, um, go through the tour. Uh, so the focus of this webinar is really um, like back to school, uh, just like a happy back to school webinar, um, really focused on getting everyone set up um, and making sure that they have all the resources they need um, and are ready for like that first day of class. Um, a lot of people here are new to VidCode, um, so we'll also be like just going through the dashboard, um, how to add students, what's available, um, and going over some like new features, uh, kind of like scattered throughout, um, including new resources in the workstation, um, like debugging resources, uh, reference resources, um, and the showcase, uh, which is new this year. Um, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and um, dive in. Uh, Ali, do you want to do an intro? Yeah, sure. So um, like Leander said, um, I'm Ali. We're both co-founders of Big Code and really excited to talk to you guys at back to school time. Um, we're going to kick off with a demo that just really addresses you know, onboarding, starting your first class. We're going to go over some new features, different ways that you can make your own curated galleries throughout the school year. Um, and this is really just the start of a conversation. Um, we're always available uh, for follow-up questions outside of this, but really excited to, to kick off with you guys today. So um, yeah, with that, I'll let you go into the screen share. All right, awesome. And yeah, please um, write questions um, if you have any below. Just getting started. Cool. Um, so before we dive into things like new features, um, one thing that I just wanted to go over, because I know there's some new uh, new teachers here, um, is a focus on just like that first day of class. Um, so like making your class, uh, adding your first student. Um, so for that, I'm just going to go over to my classes. Um, I already have three classes here, uh, but for this new class, um, I want a whole new like a new year, I want a new class to go ahead and manage my students. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and click new class right up here um, and give it a name. Uh, what should I name it? Like 19. Back to school. Okay. <laughs> Back to school. Um, I have two options from what to assign here uh, creative coding or the cross curricular coding kit. Almost all the time, I'm going to be using creative coding here. Um, Cross-curricular coding kit is more something I would use if I was having like a one-off workshop uh, instead of like a whole class. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and now that I've named my class, selected creative coding, um, I'm going to go ahead and press create class here. And I'm going to have it appear uh, right on top of the rest of my classes. Um, back to school, zero students, um, and I'm ready to go. So the very first day when I'm adding students, uh, I'm going to go ahead and press add students. Once I've added students to my class, this language is going to switch to class dashboard. Um, but for now, I can click into here. Um, and I have two ways to add students the first day. Um, one is for them to just sign up through the home page uh, and use this class code. Um, another way that's maybe a bit easier is just to give them this URL. So I'm going to go ahead and model that really quick. Uh, so a student on the first day, I'm going to go ahead, copy this, give it to them um, either through a Google Doc or your classroom um, or some other way, maybe email. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put that into my URL as a, uh, as a student. Um, it gives me the option to sign up as a student or a teacher. Even if they like, are tricky and sign up as a teacher, they're still only going to have student access in your class. Um, you would have to manually upgrade someone like within your class to be a teacher uh, and we added that because we didn't want students uh, signing up for teacher access to your class. Um, once the students have signed up there, uh, they have the option to either sign up through their Google or Microsoft accounts um, or just go ahead and sign up with their email. I'll do that since this is kind of a test. Um, I'll name it, what should I name them? I would still do back to school. <laughs> back to school student. <laughs> <laughs> Exclamation point. 
Um, <laughs> uh, so the cool thing about student emails um, is that I know a lot of your students don't have emails, maybe they don't have the Google accounts. Um, that's okay. We don't ever send students emails. Um, we uh, are very conservative, or we're very serious about the ways that we follow COPPA compliance um, and all of that. Uh, so we're actually never going to send your students emails unless it's like a reset password email. Uh, so if students don't have emails, they're welcome to put really anything, any information in here, as long as it's like an email format. Um, the one caveat to that is that students, um, if they put in a fake email address, uh, they can't reset their passwords. So I would 100% recommend if students are going about things this way, um, and if they don't have real email addresses, um, make sure they click show password here and like double check their passwords before going ahead and like submitting. Um, because otherwise they're just stuck with this password that they can't get. Um, and if we're able to fix that. You can always reach out to us and you can like, like the student's account and have them sign up again. Um, but it can be easier if they, if they double check while they're still on this step. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and press next here. Okay, so I get a little congratulations message. Um, I'm now a member of Back to School. So this is the student view. It's very similar to the teacher view, except my call to action is start coding instead of like see my class dashboard or add students. Um, as a student, I also get a dashboard where I can like review my own progress um, and view certificates that I earn and stuff like that. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna go into start coding so you can see what this might look like the first day. Um, so as a new student here, um, because I assigned creative coding, uh, I'm getting put right into the intro to JavaScript level. Um, and my very first activity, create a filter here. Um, there's this great picture of what I'll be making. Uh, it's bold. Um, so this is where I would probably start out. Um, you can see that there's eight of these. Um, four more are being released at the end of the month. I'm kind of going to give you a preview of that uh, at the end here. Um, but you can kind of see how everything builds on each other. Sorry, if I ever pause, I'm just like letting new people into the webinar. Um, so we have all these different levels here of what students build as they go through. Um, it can be fun for them to be able to like see what they'll be making. It's a way to kind of keep them excited. Um, like, all right, like, hey, like this filter that I'm making is cool, but I really want um, it to be interactive. Uh, I really want it to be a game. Um, I really want to make like a video DJ project. Um, and they're able to see like, all right, like I can see how this builds on uh, the things I've learned before. Um, and I really want to get to these more advanced projects. Uh, but for now, to start, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into Creative Filter. A lot of you have seen this already here, uh, so I'm not going to spend too, too much time on it. Um, but I do want to show you some of the new features that we have. Um, so all the tutorials on VidCode are set up in a similar way. Uh, you're going to have instructions on the left here, your code editor in the middle, um, the final project here on the right. Um, and then like the actual media down here on the bottom. Um, as I go through, I'm gonna go ahead and press next to keep going. Uh, I'm gonna be prompted to do some initial things like select a video. And when I select a video, I see it appear in my video uh, in my like kind of actual project on the top right, as well as in my code here. Um, this is cool because a lot of times uh, students are coming straight to VidCode from something like Scratch. Uh, so it's kind of cool that they get the option to have something that turns into like real JavaScript right away. As I keep clicking through, I'm going to have these buttons start to appear here. Um, I can go ahead and drag these into my code editor. They're going to turn into JavaScript right away. Um, and I'm gonna be able to start playing around and making something really unique here. Cool. 
Uh, as students go through even level one, um, we start to get into variables and properties. Um, and then level two, we get into arrays. Level three, we get into loops and functions. Um, this first activity is really here to inspire students um, to get them used to the vid code, code editor, get them used to writing real JavaScript, maybe even get them used to errors appearing, uh, as can happen, um, in kind of this like safe environment where it's like pretty easy to still fix things. Um, a new feature that I wanted to show you all. Um, so if you're familiar with other coding tools, uh, this is something that you've seen before. Um, but we're really, really excited about it. Um, we have this console here uh, where students are able to log messages in. Um, so a straightforward way that this works is that I can just like put a message in. It's fun, it's not super helpful. Um, but those of you who have gone through more advanced tutorials know that there are some tutorials where a lot's happening um, but students don't necessarily see it right, the changes right away on their video. Um, so there are a lot of projects that use things like randomness. Oh. <laughs> um, and it can be hard to model that for students right away. Um, and now they have the opportunity to use the log to see like, all right, like every time I run this, my number is going to change. See, so now I have a different number here. So that's one example of where I could do this. Um, another example is if I'm playing around with variables, as I start to do even in level one. Um, let's say I set like a variable to 24 and then I add five to that. There's no way just from my like video editor here um, that there's a way to see this. We used to kind of like hack it with, uh, oh, haha. <laughs> We used to kind of hack it with like showing it up on the text editor, on the video. Um, but that could get tricky, especially if there were like loops in the code. Um, you can kind of see that like when I put text in here, it appeared on my video. Uh, but you can also see how if I have a more complicated project, that's not the best way for me to be doing things. Um, so now I'm just able to write it here. Um, and there we go, it appears in my console. Um, so that's something that we're really, really excited about. Um, by default, it clears on code change. Uh, so like every time a project is run, uh, the console will get reset. Um, and you can also clear it by just clicking this here. Um, so that's kind of a debugging tool that like we're super, super excited about. It's something that was like requested a lot, um, especially when students get to like level three and above uh, and start to get into some of those like harder projects. Cool. Um, so that was the log. Uh, just to recap, I know um, the audio wasn't great, uh, but it's just a place where uh, uh, that we added where students can it's really just as a teacher, um, something for students to have access to um, in the more advanced lessons to be able to check their variables, um, see error messages, um, check randomness, really anything you would do in any programming log. We're really excited to have that again. Um, the other thing that I want to point out uh, that's sort of a debugging tool and resource that we've added um, are these great tool tips here. Um, so if you hover over uh, any the in the code function, um, it'll go ahead and give you this great pop up that has what gets accepted into the function. Um, so in tint, it's color and amount. Um, in color invert, there's nothing. In, uh, if I pull in something vignette, um, I'll have the same thing. Uh, so here I actually learned something new. Um, there's a mount which gets filled in by default, but then there's these two properties that pass in, uh, also the X and Y amount. So let's see. Cool. So I'm able to change the X and Y location of my vignette. Um, something that I maybe wouldn't have known um, without this cool tool to pop up. Another really cool thing that it does is that I can click full reference here. 
Um, and I'll go ahead and actually jump to the area of the reference page um, where the information about this lives. Um, so for those of you who haven't checked out this part yet, um, there's always the area where the um, buttons and the information relevant to this particular um, activity that students are on will show up. Uh, but if students are, let's say, on like a or project, like I really want to add a filter and I can't remember how to do that, um, or like how do I modify, like how do I move a graphic again, this reference is always here. Um, it's this great place for students to be able to look through and like, like there's about say text uh, and have all the information that they may have already learned or maybe not. Um, about how to edit text. And so with something like this, um, I'm going to move to that part in the reference right away um, and get more information about the code that I'm writing. Uh, so that's another new feature that we're really, really excited about. Um, I feel like this like dinosaur is a bit too spooky. There we go. <laughs> so those are the two new debugging features we added. Um, are there uh, any questions about any any of that? Or unrelated that people would like us to cover today? All right, cool. Uh, well, people can go ahead and ask questions throughout. Um, but yeah, any questions about like the code editor, what we added? Um, your students probably aren't going to start using things like log until level three. Um, but once it starts, Being useful, it gets like it's very, very useful, especially with like debugging um, and the stages of the project that our students preparing for something to appear uh, on their editor here. Uh, so, someone asked about the um, uh, so everything that you see here is available on the free version. Um, the difference is just going to be, I can go ahead and show you. So, if I go back. To last year. You're going to have access to just like a different level of material. Um, so you'll have access to the coding kit um, and all of level one here. Um, so about uh, 18 hours of projects to really dive in and explore with your students. Um, you have access to all the effects, um, everything in the reference, everything that we're going over here. Cool. So then if there aren't any questions, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of the chair or I mean the student area um, and go back into my teacher view um, and show you around a bit. Um, so there isn't going to be any fresh see the student that I just added. Um, I think it'll just say yeah, my back to school student. Um, so every time a student adds up with this uh, share URL, they're automatically going to get added here. Um, you saw before that I had these um, demo students. Those go away as soon as I start to add students um, in my own class. Those are kind of just there so you can explore the roster and the progress and projects and see how they work um, before you have a chance to add students. Um, Just to show you a bit here, um, from your roster, you'll be able to click into individual students and see their progress, um, see what they've been working on. Um, and you can also, just through the dashboard, see all the uh, uh, students or class. Um, so here I can go into progress. Um, there isn't going to be much yet because uh, all I have is this back to school student. Um, yellow means that they've started a project but not submitted it yet. Um, and then means that they've set a project uh, and it able to view it. Um, as students go through, let me jump into a class where there's a bit more going on. Here we go. So now you can see there's more students in my roster. By default, um, these are sorted by, uh, alphabetically. Um, you're able to change the way they're sorted in sort and filter. Um, and if they don't have a last name, they're going to be uh, set at the end here.
So you can see from here, I'm able to see like full um, progress view of all my students. Uh, I can see that um, Teresa is almost done with level one. Um, Sam is totally done. Um, and once they've finished different levels, they're able to bring these like really cool certificates. Uh, they can access these either from their own dashboards or you can always print them um, from your dashboard here. I'm also to see my projects. So in that like very first day of class, um, it can take a second to load. Um, so in that very first day of class, as my students submit different projects, they'll start to appear here. Uh, so if I wanna like watch my students' projects as they submit them, I, uh, if I want them to like share back at the end, um, I'm able to like pull one out from here uh, and pull one up and have them share it. Um, so from here, if I open a project, I'm able to see what the student Need um, and I'm also able to see their code next to it. Uh, and I can do that with like every single project that a student submitted. Um, I'm also able to see the quiz results from my student. Um, these are also taking a minute to load. Um, well, that's loading. Uh, sorry about that. Sometimes when I share my screen, things slow down. Um, so from here, I'm also able to see like all of my students' quiz results. Um, this is cool because I'm able to see if they're like understanding the material. Um, if they should move forward, if I should give them some supplementary material uh, to go over. If something went terribly wrong, I'm able to open this and see um, what happened. It looks like a student left these students blank. I'm also able to see like the correct answer uh, if I want to review it with a student. Cool. Um, so then I'm going to go through here as uh, plan. Um, so the lesson plans are really cool because there's one available for every single one of the activities in the course. Um, it's quite a bit of material that we've put together there. So that very first filter that I'm going to do on the first day of class, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open that here. Um, every single activity is going to have a big idea associated with it. Um, also, like a brief introduction about the actual activity standards that aligns to. There will often be CST standards um, and GSS standards for every single every single activity, like across the whole um, across the whole course. Each one is going to have a background, uh, what to introduce students, what to about um, for this very very first project. Um, we're often just introducing JavaScript, um, what it is. Uh, there's this little blurb about what a programming language is and why we use them. It also introduced functions. Um, writing functions themselves becomes like a really important skill for the students to learn in some of the later activities. Uh, so it can be a really cool introduction to start just playing around with some of its code functions in uh, the first activity. Uh, it can be important to use that vocabulary and use that language right at the beginning. There will sometimes be um, in the lesson plans just like external teacher references. Um, so something like this is just going to open uh, more functions from W3 school. Um, and as you go through the lesson plans, uh, there will be like more additional resources in uh, the lesson plans for you to access as you're preparing for class or reviewing. Um, there's also information on like the actual code challenge here. Uh, so um, what students will be doing. Uh, and if you do want to show them what they'll be making before a class starts, every single project has a sample solution. That I can go ahead and open um, if I want to show students what they'll be making before class starts, uh, or if I want 
to review it with students afterwards. These students are having running into bugs, um, and you as the teacher want sort of an answer key. Um, that's always available for you in every lesson plan. Cool. The other piece can be really, really, uh, and that it's like a really key part of lesson plans is just sharing. Um, so sharing will often have different prompts, um, either to talk to a student one-on-one -on -one or a student to share with the class. Um, and those can be important because it gives students a chance to like talk about their project, show off their work, uh, but it also gives them the chance to use the vocabulary that they've started to learn in the introduction and then in the actual tutorial. Um, and the more that they use that vocabulary and that language um, when talking about their work, the better the concepts can really tend to stick with the students. We also have these reflection questions uh, for every single activity. Um, these can be really great, uh, especially um, for classes that do have that reflection. Um, often students will journal uh, or coding notebook where they like write about their projects and track their progress. So like I said, these are um, for every single one. And they can be a really great resource um, as you start to go through. Um, they'll have uh, examples of some of the code that, or the code concepts that students get introduced to. Um, in the case of properties, is an example of like using it with a teacher, um, an example of different methods. And sometimes um, they'll also have like additional prompts, uh, like activities to do in class. So in the case of making, uh, there's the option to like set Beyonce or Stephen Curry as uh, kind of like a variable um, and set properties and methods for them. Um, so that can be like a really, really fun project. Uh, and some like that you can find in lesson plans. Cool. One more new feature that I want to show you all is just the showcase. Um, so the showcase is uh, we released it right when we started. I believe um, the showcase is just this like really cool place to share your students' projects. Um, so if you look in here, um, I've already started filling this out. Yours by default will be blank. Uh, if I want to. Projects. I did a project here. Um, choose these three dots and select add to showcase. When something's in my showcase, it's going to have this little star next to it. And then I can go into my showcase and see a, a list of all my projects here and go ahead and preview it. And here it is. Um, so this is just like a collection of student work that I put together. Um, I can share this with teachers. I can share this uh, with parents. Um, or or I've seen um, where um, a teacher will put student projects into here um, and use it as a place for students to review each other's work. Um, so if I'm doing like make a meme this week, um, I can put student projects and meme here uh, and use it as an opportunity for students to like see other memes that students have made and uh, maybe give them feedback. The other really cool thing about this page is that there aren't any student names on it, if you notice. Um, if I like go ahead and click into, um, let's see, this, uh, this Doge project, my student names are not here. Uh, so I don't have to worry about like student privacy um, or laws when, oh, there isn't any identifiable on the showcase. So that's uh, the new feature there. Um, I also want to show you all the new render we worked on this summer, like the new effects library, as well as the new course material. Um, but before I leave from this page, I want to see if anyone had any questions. Oh, one last thing on the stage. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, so if I go into edit class here, um, this just lets me rename my class. 
Um, or if I ever want to archive a class, if I want to get rid of it, um, I can just go ahead and archive it here. And I would just be able to see it from the desk. Aw, thanks, Karen. Um, cool. So one thing that we worked on this summer um, that I'm really proud of um, a new library. Um, and it's a bit tricky to show off um, because the actual code students rate is the same. Um, we wanted it to be to work with all our existing courses. Um, we wanted it. Uh, we wanted students to, be able to use what they. Uh, but it just um, gives us the option to make more advanced projects uh, from classes. Uh, I don't know if some of you got to some of the later projects. Um, the projects where students are making more than like. It's on a screen. The project really starts to slow down. Um, so we started working on this library to solve that, um, to make it so that if students upload a video, um, it's a bit bigger, uh, or if they want a lot of elements, to do that without a library down. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the projects that can, can be made with this new library. Um, so this is kind of just like a starter one, uh, but you can see just like how many um, angles I have on this screen. Uh, this is something that would have been uh, a little bit slower on the old editor. Um, so I'm able to do things like have like all these rectangles up. Um, and like I said, this also gives me the option to upload higher quality videos um, and photos uh, uh, run just as well. Um, this one too that has, I'm just going to be showing you guys projects with like a lot of elements on the screen, um, just because that's sort of like the best way to show this off. Um, but a project like this, uh, uh, I don't know how many direct plot, um, and I'm just like making this cool effect where the color kind of goes in, uh, and even something like this would be able to run no problem. Um, some other projects, uh, something like this gradient spiral with like thousands of circles. Um, and then something similar where we animate in. I'm going to go ahead and add some other animations to this. Cool. Um, so once again, this is playing with like thousands of particles and shapes on the screen um, and we're able to do it no problem uh, which is pretty cool um, and something that I'm just really excited about uh, I'm excited that your students will have access to this like professional level effects library in which to learn um, yeah maybe just when we have a second here and Karen thanks so much for uh, responding we just had a question about um, grade three through five as opposed to six through eight. Um, and yeah, the so many different ways to answer that question, but what I would say is definitely we work with a ton of upper elementary um, and middle school is probably almost our most popular. The way we do have a ton of high schools and the difference typically with implementation is that elementary more of our cross-disciplinary units and less of the kind of linear um, units. And, you know, in short, that's just typically kind of moved through less content. Um, and so because it's built in a way that, you know, if you're young, you're just gonna go through the first, however many hours you want, 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, and if you're an advanced student, you can kind of keep going through the, the hundreds of hours of um, curriculum that goes deeper. Um, Liam, do you wanna add So, no, um, yeah, a lot of times in upper elementary, uh, we'll see, like Ali said, um, students go through less of the content. So students will say be going through a Scratch project or a Scratch course, um, and VidCode will be used as a way to introduce JavaScript um, versus a middle This is the whole course. We'd be the only thing they're doing that semester. Yeah, and I know we, you might be muted, but Karen, if you want to share on mute or share with the group how it worked for your fourth and fifth grade students, we'd love to hear it.
Um, yeah, you can also uh, write it in the comments, Karen. Okay, awesome. Um, cool. Two uh, quick, um, some of the new units that are going live uh, at the end of the month um, that I can't wait for. Um, so where these units fit, they're in this kind of like demo space right now, um, but they, they, let me show you. If I go into start coding, um, they're gonna go right at the end here. Uh, so at the end, we have choose your own code venture where students are making interactive games. Um, so these are gonna build off of everything that students learned in the first eight levels. Um, we have projects that go deeper into object-oriented programming. Um, so students start making custom UI elements, uh, things like buttons, things like Um, and the reason those are really cool is because they're totally reusable. So students are making their, cust their own custom reusable elements. The way someone would if they were making like an effect library or like a game like library or system, um, and they're doing it on their own. Two keeps building on that uh, and showing different ways that students would be using that. Um, and then in three, we start to get more into data visualizations, um, data structures, uh, a deeper dive as well. Um, and then in unit four, um, we start to get more into artificial intelligence um, and the way that people can train computers to make decisions. Um, so we're really, really excited about this. Uh, um, this meal. Uh, it gets into a lot more advanced stuff, uh, and you'll all be getting um, an email an announcement um, once that goes live later this month. Awesome. So that was a lot of great features. I'm really excited with you guys. Um, would love to take them on for any other questions. And also, um, if no one has a question, I would love to hear, we're going to be hosting more of these webinars. So if there's any area that Leandra mentioned that you guys would love for us to go um, for on maybe advanced projects, maybe um, upper elementary, um, implementations, um, anything of that nature. If you have an idea, feel, feel free to share in the chat as well. Um, but we really um, are grateful for you guys joining and learning a bit about how to set up a class, get started, as well as um, some of the new features that you can use to um, share student projects safely um, and also in a really visual, fun way with your whole community. Um, any other kind of closing? No, yeah. Um, if, uh, sorry that the audio wasn't good in the beginning. We're going to be sending out a recording as well. Um, and if anyone does have any questions, uh, follow-up questions, um, you can email info at code.com or near Ali directly. Uh, Ali is Ali at vidcode.com. I'm Leandra at vidcode.com. Um, additionally, uh, if anyone wants to go over this again or like has any more specific questions, um, we do have uh, uh, like meetings. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Calendly link um, in the chat uh, so that you're all able to access it. Um, and if anyone wants next, um, and like I said, good brain to any of those, um, you can use that calendar link to go ahead and get set up. Um, you can dive deeper into anything you want to do here. Um, as well as focus more on the curriculum for your grade level or anything you would want to go. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Karen, for your advice and everyone for their questions. And we look hope to see some of you again on the next one um, and have a great start to your school year. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Take care. We'll leave the chat open for a couple minutes.